what do you think of it, you know, getting away as a team and, and that sort of thing? Because it does kind of go against the trend in the National Football League. But what does it mean to you and to this team, do you think? Uh, it's my first year here, so uh, definitely something heavily anticipated when they said we were going to be here. Uh, I look forward to it. It's definitely uh, a team bonding kind of thing, getting away from your home. You know, only thing I miss is my bed. But other than that, I enjoy being around the guys and getting back to football. You know, it's early. What have you seen going up against a guy like Kair Elam, the young rookie first round pick? I mean, it's only day two, so. Uh, so like we got a lot to build off of just as far as like uh, as a team and as a unit, as far as like individual. Uh, you know he's a good player. You know he was drafted in the first round. Um, of course they're going to expect a lot out of him immediately, but I feel like he's up to the task, and uh, I hope I hope we can build off of it. With Tim taking over as offensive coordinator now. Um, I think something's in my nose. <laughs> <laughs> With Ken taking over as offensive coordinator, what have you noticed in terms of the difference, and, and how much of an adjustment do you think it is for? I think it's a, I think it's a lot of things actually similar more than the difference because they were kind of underneath. Uh, you know, he was a QB coach, so he kind of kept things predominantly the same as far as uh, terminology and language, just so we didn't have to relearn a lot of this stuff. Uh, but I, feel, I don't really know. I'm not in the quarterback OC room. I'm just doing what I'm told. So uh, I just feel like uh, he's doing a great job. Um, we just taking, like I said, we're just building off it brick by brick. It's only day two. You know what I'm saying around like day 17, day 16. I'll let you know. They've always moved you around pretty well in the offense. With Cole being gone, I mean, Cole, you could count on was in the slot all the time, and rightfully so. But, I mean, do you see uh, moving around maybe even more uh, in different spots? Well, no, I think they're just going to keep me in one spot the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> How much do you think Gabe Davis's performance in that playoff game was a launching point and prepared him for what should be a bigger role this year? I don't think it was necessarily that game because uh, as we all knew, uh, especially his first year, we knew he was a, he carried himself as a professional. He stacked every day. And everybody on his team would not only respect the game but knew he was a talented receiver. It wasn't more so that game because he, he had the ability before that. You know, you saw it week in and week out, especially as a receiver. You get to see a guy every day. So it was more so everybody else saw it rather than, than we saw it because uh, it, I, wasn't, I wasn't surprised of anything that he did that game. Uh, he had a hell of a game, but right now Gabe is having a hell of a career if you consider it for a young guy. You know what I'm saying he stepped in as a as young guy, was playing early, and that second year, all he did was make take the second year jump to me at least. Uh, and I, didn't, I wasn't surprised by it at all. I just felt like he was just doing what he had been doing. Just everybody got to see it at a higher level. How's, how have you seen him step up perhaps even more this offseason coming into this camp, perhaps? I mean, I mean, kind of like when, you, when I say earlier, like it's day two. But as far as like uh, my personal relationship with Gabe, I watch him put a lot of time in, in the offseason. I watch him uh, hone in on the things he, you know, I feel like he felt like was weaknesses. And uh, he kind of took it day by day. You know what I'm saying? It translates now. You know, we all just trying to get on the same page right now. It's more so you, every league year starts starts different. This is a brand new team, uh, a lot of new pieces. You know, some pieces are gone. So as far as like starting over again and building that clay. So uh, as far as the like individual, Gabe is a hell of a player. He's talented, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, we got a hell of a quarterback. We got some running backs, we got some receivers. But it all goes into um, not putting the uh, carriage before the horse, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, you've, been, you've, been, you've had different coordinators throughout your stops in your career. What is the key to making sure when you have a new coordinator to get everybody on the same page as quick as possible? What has been the common denominator to do that? Uh, I guess communication. I would say communication is everything, especially from an OC standpoint, just trying to convey the message on what kind of offense you want to have, what kind of identity you want to have. And that's something that not only uh, Coach McDermott does, but everybody's echoing it. What kind of identity you want to have? What kind of team you want to have? And you just take it day by day because you don't come out and figure out who you are day one and day two, but you can kind of start laying a foundation on uh, what kind of team you want to be. Want to be. And they, they have a, they do a great job of bringing in the right kind of players you know, with their right mindset of you know uh, not putting the carriage before the horse, putting a lot of time in. And uh, that's what you got to do. In order to be a good team, you got to stack those days, you know what I'm saying, and uh, build that identity. So you just take it one day at a time. There were a couple of times early in practice that the offense was struggling a little bit. You seemed to step up and get the little guys in asking you how to hand their energy up yeah. a little bit. And how have you seen yourself kind of grow into that leadership role kind of since you got here? I mean, I feel like I've kind of, um, I've been that guy as far as like sense of urgency, uh, one play at a time, you know what I'm saying? I echo it to my quarterback, I echo it to everybody. 
I never want to have a low and I never want to ride that roller coaster because, you know, throughout games and throughout practice, you're going to have those ebbs and flows of good plays, bad plays, good plays, bad plays. So I kind of try to stay even keel and keep the energy positive, you know, breathe confidence in the guys to the left and to the right of me. So when you're making plays, you know, feel excited about it, be happy about it. You know, you kind of get caught up with just doing your job right. And, you know, especially the, the twos and the threes, they be like, this. I'm just trying not to mess up. So when you do something well, you need to be happy, you need to celebrate. And when you score a touchdown, you need to, um, need to, you need to give me some energy. So as far as like those lows in practice, that's, the, that's, that's my job. That's part of my job. I feel like uh, as an individual and part of this team, I can't let nobody be dry in a sense. Understanding the sample size is small and obviously a relationship with his brother. What have you seen from James and his skill set yeah. and how he could maybe potentially help his team? A lot of similarities, a lot of similarities. Um, they, as we know, four, the other four was a, is a hell of a running back in this league. Um, one of the best running backs, in my opinion. I used to argue all the time, was he top three or top two? And I used to be like, well, I feel like he's one. He's the best running back. He can do everything. And it's uh, the little that I'll say, you know, I've seen a little bit of it the past couple of days. I saw some in the spring. Um, but they say the apple don't fall far from the tree. So I think we got a good one. Hopefully, you know, it pans out. But he's done some great things. He's a professional. He looks smooth. He's a real, he's smooth running back. Um, and hopefully he can add to this offense that we got. We're entering your third year now with Josh. You certainly have a good chemistry and rapport. What is the next step, though, in the evolution of your relationship and, and chemistry on the field? Yeah, I mean, I felt like uh, even in the first year, uh, people would say you got to kind of, um, you know, you need a lot of reps and you need a lot of time. But it's more so you just got to be on the same page with a guy. When it comes down to playing ball, oh, y'all know Josh Allen is a gamer. You know what I'm saying he's a, he's, a, he's a football player. So as far as like being a football player out there, being on the same page, it's all communication. And going into the third year, it's about dominating. Um, that's, that's my mindset. I don't want to lose. I never want to lose. I heard you, coach. Uh, I never want to lose. But with him, um, staying where we need to be as far as, like, you know, Josh is super hard on himself as, as well. You know, good play, bad play, not riding that roller coaster. You know, your next play is your best play. And I believe that, you know, that's my quarterback. I'm, saying, I'm rocking with him regardless. I just want to dominate it. I don't want to lose. He's become, he's become a celebrity in some ways. I yeah. mean, like, he's really grown. He's big sh <laughs> how how is he, how have you seen him maintain still be Josh while dealing with the experience the whole Josh experience that's, that that surrounds him? I feel like he's the same person. I mean, kind of similar to the Gabe situation. Everybody else gets to see. You. Everybody knows you. Um, but as far as like being that same person, you don't change. He's still the same person. I know that loves to golf, loves to do everything he loves to do. Um, when more people know you, uh, you just got more eyes on you. And he's the same. He's the same guy. He's. Some people you know that, you know, they say uh, money doesn't change you. Money makes you more of the person that you already are. So he's the same person. You know what I'm it, wasn't, it wasn't the money. It wasn't people knowing him. He's a good guy. He's a goofball. So I know he big When we first talked to Khalil Shakir, he said he wasn't going to pretend to be cool because he's a big Stephon Dix fan. <laughs> and he can't believe he's on the same team. And once again, understanding the sample size is small. What have you seen from him and how he could uh, he's a professional, you know, he's a young guy, so he's trying not to F up. So I, I'm, I'm super hard on those guys just because uh, I see some potential. When I see some potential in those young guys, I just want the best out of them, you know, and um, you never know how this thing is going to shake out. You know, guys get injured or guys get tired. You know, you never know when you need those guys to step up. Like earlier, he had to go in after I caught a pass and having that, having that confidence in those young guys that I can send him in there and he's not going to mess up. You know what I'm saying? So he's been doing a good job so far, you know, knock on wood. So hope this is wood. But uh, I, I hope he continues to continues to grow and stack those bricks. Young guys gonna be young guys, but you know what I'm saying I'm pulling for him always. How was your DC event? Oh, it was awesome. You know, um, I'm I'm trying to build off it. Actually, I had 70 plus black vendors. You know, entrepreneurs promoting entrepreneurship. You know, this day and age, everybody want to work for themselves. So, I'm trying to give them an avenue to uh, you know not only make a difference on my end, but I believe in making a difference is you know putting money in people's pockets. I was going to ask you similar. You also had a chance to have a camp for you yeah. know, for young kids back mm -hmm. in your hometown. Yeah. You know how personally rewarding is that for you to be able to find ways to contribute to your community that way and, and in, in that other event as well. I think it's part of my responsibility. Um, as far as like having a platform is one, and using it effectively to make a make a difference or making change is another. So uh, a lot of my a lot of my initiatives are geared to women and kids. You know, I try to. I feel like those are the most you know, uh, impactful, you know, as men, we got to stand on our own team, kind of got to figure it out. And I always try to be there for the people who, you know, 
uh, might might be less fortunate or might just need an opportunity. So using my platform effectively and those kids, you don't ever know. Those kids being close to you, might could, you know, you might see the next Adrian Peterson, the next star in those kids, and uh, giving them something to do outside of being outside. You know, might be having a little fun, but might be getting in trouble as well. So for me, is you know, creating another avenue, creating another you know vantage point for for people to just to better themselves. You said personal goals, you know, stats, because you had the greatest receiving season in Bill's history two years ago. It was alright. <laughs> you see yourself doing that again? You set the I, bar even higher? I mean, I had that conversation uh, with Coach Davis when he was there my first year and my second year. I don't set individual goals uh, because I put a lot of work in, a lot of work into my craft. So, um, And you never know how it's going to shake out as far as, like, uh, it all comes down to opportunity and being ready for the opportunity. And uh, the plays coming your way, just make them. You know, setting goals is kind of feel like if you fall under anything underneath those goals, you didn't do good enough. And I don't live in that world. I live in a world of uh, my preparation going to carry me over. You know, that's where I get my confidence from. It's from my preparation. So I wonder who's right there where they're screaming. Hopefully it's Vaughn. There we go. Uh, I said, yeah, I don't, I don't live in a world of uh, setting goals. I got some team goals. That's for damn sure. We all know. But uh, individual, nah, I'll be all right. Guys around you better, like you talk about a point guard basketball and other guys numbers reflect what you bring to the table. Uh, I try not to live in that world either. I tell little dirty all the time. Like, only reason you're getting the ball is because I'm getting you open. But I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding because, you know, those guys put in a lot of time as well. But that's part of being a leader uh, in my eyes. Uh, how good are you making the guys around you? you know I'm saying not only individually, but uh, can you can you can you get more out of a young guy? Can you get more out of an older, older guy? You know what I'm saying, as far as like pushing him, like a guy like Tavon Austin. You know, Tavon Austin in my city is a legend. You know what I'm saying, and back at I'm back at home at least. Uh, he's from Baltimore, I'm on the other side, but he's a legend. You know what I'm saying, and having a time, having a chance, and opportunity to play with him. How can you derive or uh, bring some motivation to the table? How can you continue to push him, and how can he push me? So for me, uh, I try not to live in that world, but I damn sure going to die behind. I get a little dirty open. <laughs> Hey, Steph, we, you know, Last you, one you mentioned Stephon. you don't have individual goals, yeah. but there are obviously team ones. And with the experience that you've been able to amass with this group and the steps this franchise has taken, how ready, I realize it's early, but do you feel this group is to, to take that next step? Um, I would say we got some experience. You know what I'm saying? We got experience getting to kind of where we want to go. Uh, do we have the team? Uh, 100%. Do we have the people? Yes. Do we have the coaches? Yes. I mean, but it's honest is on us and the preparation and kind of building it day by day. Um, I don't have individual goals for a reason because I set a standard for myself that I'm supposed to do well. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I, expect, I expect to do well. I don't expect to do anything but catch the ball and get open and that kind of thing. But for the team, uh, that's why I'm saying pushing a guy next to you. Uh, we've, been, we've been places. Have we been where we wanted to go? No. So you know where we're trying to go. Thanks, boy. <laughs>